I'm April Cattell, owner of Automated Shading and Lighting Control, and welcome to ASI TV. The roller shade is one of the most common and versatile window covering styles that we work with in both residential and commercial spaces. They are sleek, compact, and can be manufactured in a wide variety of fabrics. Motorizing them gives us the ability to build these shades at very large widths and heights, covering a large area with a single panel of fabric. That said, some fabrics are not always large enough for the window size or may require reinforcement to keep the integrity of the shade operation. If this is the case, we have a few options. First, we'll determine if the fabric can be railroaded. Railroading the fabric simply means the fabric is turned 90 degrees from the way it was originally milled and placed on the roll, allowing the manufacturer to use the length of the roll to achieve a longer run of fabric. This does mean that the fabric pattern now changes orientation. This is less critical and less noticeable in a solar fabric because the weave is less directional than it would be in a soft fabric with patterns or stripes. That said, the fabric pattern is considered as well as ensuring that all fabrics in the same area, regardless of shade size, are also railroaded for consistency. Next, if the fabric cannot be railroaded or the height of the shade requires it, two pieces of fabric may be attached by a seam. This seam is typically heat sealed or welded together and always runs horizontally in the fabric, never vertical. This is because, remember, a roller shade wraps around a tube and the consistency and thickness of the fabric as it rolls up is critical for level operation of the shade. Where possible, seams should be positioned to align with any horizontal window mullions to minimize their visibility and help make them part of the intended design. If a seam location is not selected, it is typically about two inches below the fabric width measuring up from the floor. So for example, if your fabric is 98 inches wide, then your seam placement will usually be around 96 inches. Another reason why a horizontal seam or batten may be needed is to prevent some of the characteristics that can occur in a very wide or very tall narrow shade. Examples of this include V's or ripples in the shade or an hourglass effect where the shade begins to curl at the edges. These can tend to happen when a shade is over nine feet wide. While they are not uncommon, some customers find these unappealing. To avoid this, a batten can reduce tube deflection or sag in the shade. A batten is a horizontal stiffener made of fiberglass that is inserted into a small pocket in the fabric panel, typically near the vertical center of the shade or at a seam. Your ASI specifier will also give consideration to aspect ratio, where the width to height ratio exceeds one to four, typically requiring a batten detail. This type of construction can cost more, but it is highly effective in ensuring that these shades hang and track straight, as well as prevent waves and damage that can occur to large shades to keep them in good condition for years to come. So whether the goal is to ensure proper function of large shades, aesthetic details, or finding ways to use your favorite fabric, I hope this was helpful in understanding some of the details to consider. If you like this episode, let us know or send us any questions you have related to this topic. You may also subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on Facebook. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week with a new episode of ASI TV. Tune in and learn more on controlling your light and transforming your space with shading and lighting control.